Well, I've been on vacation and I've been playing around with siphon, uh, I guess siphon tech for aquaponics. This is my ABS siphon. I'm gonna, I've tried everything you can think of. I've tried to think outside the box and even went, tried some different things and even tried a little bit with the bell siphon. I'm just, overall, I'm way more pleased with the ABS siphon, the above bed siphon. And it will work, I will demonstrate later uh, where, you know, it, it does work just siphoning straight down with no tube under the bucket. It will siphon straight down. But I have uh, tried to perfect it, tweak it in every way. And so far, this is what I've come up with. You know, it's everything I've tried, you know, works pretty much is with the ABS siphon. This is what I've come up with as far as tweaks. There's a number of them. A few. Number one is keeping this up as high as I can, you know, in the uh, ABS siphon process. Keep it, these bins in the pipe. I had them try them way down here, so I've got them up, and I could raise them a little higher uh, by shaving a little bit more off. I shaved some off here. Uh, but keeping that as high in the chain as you can uh, gives the best results. And uh, another thing, using these reducing elbows, because once you start the siphon, and I even tried it uh, like this, and it works well like this, you know, uh, using the reducing elbow over here, and then go in like from one and a quarter, or one and a half to, or you know, even bigger to three quarter, and then you know, staying three quarter the rest of the way down. Uh, it's important that you know you start up here somewhere at the top, whether you start over here or over here, instead of using bushings to come as high as you can in the chain with your your smallest denominator pipe and continue with it straight down through the bottom of your drain bed, you know, all the way down until it drains and drops down into your drain pipe. Because I'm not dropping down, I am here just for my experiment. I'm I'm thinking big aquaponics, so even though I'm doing little aquaponics, I wanna drop down into a common drain pipe, send that drain pipe over to my sump tank you know, and eventually, you know, be a large sump tank and have many beds draining into a, you know, common drains, you know, and send them over to drain into, well, the way I'm going to do it, drain into my fish tank, which will overflow to my biofilter, which will overflow to the sump tank, because the only place I really need pressure is coming out into the grow beds, and so I'll pump them from the sump back up to the grow beds to the fish tank to the biofilter to the sump but getting back to my siphon keeping that lowest denominator pipe up as high as you can start and stay whether it's one and a quarter or one inch is your lowest denominator pipe and going through the bed you know not using bushings you know if you're you got a one inch bulkhead you know, you get your pipe, whether it's three quarter or, or one inch or whatever. You know, good and snug, flush, tight fit down into the the bulkhead. And then the same way, because you, you know, you use a, those bushings and it just creates a little bulge, a little bit of an air pocket, you know, uh, in your siphon, which affects it a little bit, I, I, I found. Uh, it seems to and then coming out the bottom What I've done I'll show you over here Right here actually Is I found it just a little bit of a bend it like I said it will drain straight down But just a little bit of a bend just you know one of these little spigots here and just push it flush up into the, the bottom and then another elbow turn again stay with your same low denominator pipe turn and go down and then drop into your T into your you know into your larger pipe you know just drop down into your T into your larger pipe 
Of course, you'll need a burp valve if you're going to, uh, especially if you're going to do it like I am, uh, you know, putting oxygen back into the uh, fish tank as it drains into the fish tank. You need a, a burp, burp valve, air, air valves for it to break siphon. Uh, and then, of course, every time, if you're going to add more drain beds to it, you're going to need to uh, periodically increase your pipe uh, diameter as you got more drains, uh, drain beds draining into it, and take that in consideration every time you turn another bend in that pipe. Uh, you know, you might think about increasing uh, the diameter size of that pipe again. I found that most of the problems in the siphon are not above the bed in your bell siphon or your ABS siphon or whatever. Uh, but the, they're in your plumbing on the underside, and I think that one mistake I've made, and it sounds like I think others probably are the same, is tweaking with your bell siphon when it's probably on the underside of your bed is probably the problem. You know, and of course you got to have enough water coming in. But going from a two and a half inch pipe to a three quarter. Uh, there's no problem at all with this ABS siphon. I've got it ready to overflow and I'm just gonna give a little demonstration. Turn the water up just a little bit. And you see I've got just a little bit of flow, not very much uh, flow there. Probably ought to turn it up just a little bit. But I'm going to uh, leave it right there and uh, see what happens because I did find that going from this two and a half inch to the three quarter inch seems like for the ABS siphon to kick in a little bit sooner, it does make it kick in sooner than if I was say going from a one and a half to a three quarter inch pipe because I've got more water, you know, coming in, uh, a lot more coming in and going out. Seems like it makes it kick in uh, quicker. Um, for just just for tweaking purposes, it's not necessary, of course, but just to for tweaking purposes, it does. It seems like the uh, ABS siphon does seem to start firing a little bit slower, uh, but I don't have it all plumbed in. But just just for tweaking purposes, this is my best results and it's uh you would think that it would uh, restrict the flow by going from two and a half to one and a quarter but uh it, it's it's doing pretty good And then when it comes time to, and you don't have to build one that big. I mean, and I can, I'm gonna fit this into a six inch drain pipe. So I've got a one and a quarter inch to three quarter that I miniaturized down to a uh, four inch drain pipe. You know, you'd think it can't be done. I didn't think it could be done, but uh, you know, set your mind to it. I guess you can do just about anything. And uh, although <laughs> that miniaturization process did take me, uh, uh, about eight months or so <laughs> it was it was not very easy I just want to show how much this is putting out it's a good bit of water fill that picture up in about eight seconds and then if you look how much is coming out here this is a I think this is about a 1,300 uh, gallon per minute pump. 
a pretty good bit. And I don't have much coming out over here. I got the majority of it coming out over here. You know, and it's, uh, I've got more water siphoning out over here than I, than I do coming out of my pump. It doesn't look like it, but it calculates when you put the picture, picture under it and the thing I like about, uh, this larger pipe, the thing I don't like about it is trying to <laughs> miniaturize it to fit in smaller drains, but, uh, you know, just for the purpose of tweaking everything, getting it to, uh, you know, its full potential. And, and that's, for that size of a pipe, or this is a 40 gallon tank, and of course it has no media in it, so it's uh, draining full of water, it's draining much slower, and it's also, I wish I had something to measure it with. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, some pretty good size set of uh, wrench there, and uh, it's not quite as tall as a wrench, but it looks like it's about at least a foot tall, so if it was a grow bed full of uh, media, it would be draining, uh, already, it would already been drained by now. I'm not trying to miniaturize it at this point. I'm just just trying my experiment and for that small amount of water for it to soften as quickly as it did, you know, that's, and then I'm gonna turn it all the way wide open now as it's about to the break point. And you can see that, you know, with it with it wide open over here, that uh, it did break. And and you can tell that, you know, how much water I when I turned it up. More, a lot more than, uh, and had no problem breaking siphon. So that's just, uh, just a few things I learned and I wanted to share. And, uh, I said if you're having any problems with your siphon, whether it's a bell siphon or, uh, you know, look on the other side of the bed. That's, <laughs> that's probably where most of your problems you're going to encounter. Uh, most of what you can do on the top of the bed, you know, you can do a lot more with an ABS siphon as far as tweaking, I, I would say, than you could with a a bell siphon uh, above the bed. But, uh, you know, you, you, there's very little you can do, you know, as far as raising and lowering your, uh, you know, bell siphon or your intake pipe to make very much of a difference. You know, most of the difference is how much water is coming in. Uh, and as you can see, I had very little coming in here, so uh, I'm uh, way more impressed with the ABS siphon than uh, there's. I've had instances where I could take out the bell siphon and put in the ABS and get it working. And I've also had instances where I had to tweak a little bit. You know, it's uh, you know I've had instances where they would quit working and then start working again, um, but. That's why I wanted to come and do some tweaks and just see what, you know, what what could I do to tweak it to, you know, get it as close to perfection as I can. And uh, those are just a few things. And uh, oh, I lost my spigot. Ah! And uh, that that was uh, another thing that seemed to just help it to fire a little bit more quickly while still. Uh, not interfering with it uh, breaking siphon.